Hallelujah. A blessed afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's a blessed anniversary also to those celebrating their uh, church anniversaries and uh, uh, those conducting seminars. I greet you from Baguio. And we send our uh, prayers and our regards to the FBCFI churches there abroad. I thank God for his trust and also the uh, leadership of Bishop Moses in this church. And uh, even our uh, beloved uh, uh, overseer of Europe for Pastor Melchor Miranda, uh, being your overseer and pastor of the churches there in Europe and in the Middle East. Thank you for giving us uh, and giving me this opportunity of uh, service and uh, being used again in God's kingdom for His glory and honor. Thank you. Uh, so I ask uh, all of you to join me in this time of reading uh, His Word and studying uh, His Word that we may continue to be blessed. May God bless you all. Before we continue, uh, may we just pray. Hallelujah. God and our loving Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Allow us, Lord, to bless your name and thank you for your presence in our midst. We ask your Holy Spirit to continue working among all those watching and all those listening wherever they are as uh, you deliver the message of your word through your servant, O oh God. Lord, bless all those uh, watching and uh, gathered to get together this time to listen to your word. Continue, Lord, to work in our midst. And we ask the spirit of understanding and the spirit of wisdom to work upon us. And uh, let your Holy Spirit continue to overflow in our hearts, Father God. And this we ask with the help of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Thank God uh, for uh, joining his servant as we uh, learn again another important uh, topic uh, this afternoon. Uh, our opening verses was found in uh, Deuteronomy. If you could open with me to the book of uh, Deuteronomy in chapter 4, verse 9. And uh, so with the Psalms chapter 39, verse 1. But we first uh, read uh, the verse in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. Only take heed to yourself, it says, and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. That's what it says in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. In the next uh, reference in Psalms chapter 39, verse 1, I said I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. Now, if you would notice in these verses, it is, uh, these are warnings for us to uh, be careful and to stand watch and to observe the things, the commandments that God has uh, given us through His Word. We go to our topic. This topic uh, this time is uh, about being a watchman. So our topic, we are called to be watchful. Uh, the first part of this is, uh, it talks about the spiritual watchman, spiritual watchman. In Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, uh, you could also read uh, the following chapters, especially in chapter 33, verse 7, that God calls us to be a watchman. But let us start reading, if you may open your Bibles with me, uh, in chapter 3, starting from verse 17. It says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman 
for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. God was calling on to Ezekiel, the prophet, to be a watchman. And he was reminding him of the, his word, of God's word to him, that we use God's word to warn those who need to be warned. In verse 18, it says, he continued to say, When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, what happens? That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity or his sin, but his blood I will require at your hand. No warning to the wicked. In short, if we do not warn the wicked, he will die in his iniquity. Mamamatay sa kanyang kasalanan. But his blood, God will require at our hands if we do not warn the wicked. So, there is an effect if we do not do our part in the responsibility as a watchman to warn. Let us continue. In verse 19, Yet if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered your soul. So you see the difference of warning and not warning. It says in verse 19 that if we warn the sinner, we warn the wicked, he dies in his iniquity. He dies in his sin. But we have gained something. We have delivered our soul. It says in the word of God that you have delivered your soul if you have warned the wicked man. Let's continue on to verse 20. Now it talks about being a righteous man. It talks about the righteous man who continues to sin. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. In the following verse, in verse 21, it continues to say, Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man, that the righteous should not sin, Pag, pag winarningan natin ang isang tao na nananampalataya sa Panginoon and he recognizes, he acknowledges his sin and that he should turn from it and should not sin and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. He hid, he heard, he listened to your warning. Also, you will have delivered your soul. That's what it uh, says in the word of God in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. Now, in another verse, in chapter 62 of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah chapter 62, the importance of being, uh, being called to become a watchman, God exhorts through the prophet Isaiah in verse 6, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem, they shall never hold their peace day or night. It means that they will not be silent. They will not keep quiet. They will be always alert, always awake. They will never hold their peace. They will never be able to rest because that's the work of a watchman in the walls. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent. Meaning, if you, those who mention of the Lord, those who remember the Lord, those who keep His word, those who are following diligently, those who are obeying, it talks about the responsibility of somebody who has concern over the church, over his brethren. And you are listening to God's word, you keep reading God's word, and you will never keep silent, especially if you see somebody sinning or somebody committing sin. And it will become your, your, your concern will now become your responsibility to voice out and to give correction. In verse 7, 
of the same book, uh, chapter 62, verse 7 of Isaiah. We continue to read here, read here and give him no rest until he establishes. Meaning this is talking about God, that until God will establish and he, until he makes Jerusalem a praise on the earth. Ingana nga mapalintig, ingana o mighty righteousness ni Apo Diyos. Iti may sa nga lugar, iti may sa nga nasyon, iti may sa nga tao, or even in a family or a church. We as watchmen, we will never keep silent. And we need to keep praying. It talks also of our responsibility to become prayer warriors, to be interceding for the nation, to be interceding for the land. Until God will make praise in the earth. Until He will make the nations, He will make the churches the people to become His praise. Amen? Let's continue to uh, the next uh, uh, references in Jeremiah chapter 6, uh, verse 17 to 21. Uh, if you have time, this is a little bit long. But uh, we are being reminded by the prophet Jeremiah that we need to listen to the sound of the warning of the trumpet. Whenever the people of God in Israel would hear the sound of the trumpet, it means that it is a warning. It's a warning for the people to be ready of an oncoming uh, plight or situation. And so in another uh, chapter of Jeremiah, in chapter 51, verse 12, we are exhorted. We read uh, and open this verse. It says here, we need to set up the standard on the walls. The standard means in other versions is the banners, banners of the, of the Lord. Set up the standard on the walls, make the guard strong, it says. Set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes. So this talks about preparation of being aware and being ready of what, what would be, what would happen. Setting up the standard means you need to put up the, the banners of the Lord. Prepare the ambushes to be ready so that your guards, your soldiers, your uh, uh, those who are in charge of keeping the wall and keeping the safety should be ready. For the Lord hath both, has both devised and done what he spoke against Babylon. If you remember in the story of uh, Joshua, in how they conquered Jericho, they were instructed by the Lord to go uh, around and uh, do a march with all their trumpets sounding, with all the, the praise and worship and the uh, music ministry in front. And uh, above and in front of the uh, trumpets and all those were the banners. In the olden times uh, where the war is done uh, in the open field, uh, most of the time the banners would be ahead. The horsemen would be carrying the banners. It would show the banners would show what kind of kingdom that's being led by a certain king and uh, the what would be uh, their name or their brand. And so in this case, in where we read in Jeremiah, the banners, uh, what, are, what are the banners? What are the standard that each Christian should be lifting up if not the name of Jesus Christ? Amen? And that's why the name of Jesus Christ, that's why He is Jehovah Nisi, our banner. We lift our banner on high as we lift the name of Jesus Christ on high. And it's very important that uh, whenever there is uh, prayer, uh, intercession and prayer and the spiritual warfare, it's always important that we lift the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a warning that uh, the, all these uh, references that we have read, is aside from the preparation wherein the watchmen would sound the trumpets, the preparation that the people of God should be doing. And uh, there's also a warning that is being uh, sounded. God would bring a sword and for his people so that they had opportunity to prepare and be safe. Okay. In another reference in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, it talks uh, also of the spiritual uh, responsibility of uh, not only the, are the people who are uh, being ruled over, but even for those who are in charge of uh, 
those who are given authority and responsibility. If we may read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, Obey those who rule, or in other ver uh, versions, lead. Obey those who lead over you, or rule over you, and be submissive, for, the wa for they watch out for your souls. They watch out. Sila ang nagbabantay. As those who must give account, let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. So, it's important for us to understand also the responsibility of those people who give us warning because they are held accountable. That is the responsibility like our pastors, our, our overseers, our leaders. They are held accountable kung ano yung resulta ng actions ng mga tao ng church. It reflects on the leadership of the pastor or the overseer. In another verse, in verse 7 of Hebrews 13, we are continued to be exhorted, remember those who rule over you who have spoken the word of God. So, those who rule over us are our teachers, our preachers, those who conduct Bible studies, those who are responsible to teach and to guide us. Now, they are the people who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, and we could see their life in their, in their, their testimonies, we listen to their testimonies, we see their life, and their faith would follow considering the outcome of their conduct. Kung ano yung mga actions nila, doon nagre-reflect yung tinuturo. Amen? So it's very difficult, it's not a joke for us to stand and teach the Word of God and we do not watch our, we do not watch our attitude, the, the, the words that we speak. Kung minsan yan, bumabalik sa atin. Tayo na nagtuturo ng salita ng Panginoon, it's very important and it's also, we take precaution because it, it is also very dangerous that if you want to say, you say you do this, then later on they will observe you that you're not doing it, it will reflect back on you. And that is what this verse is telling us, that we are responsible as watchmen, that as we teach also, as we guide people, as we... Uh, teach them to read the word of God, to be obedient, must much more, it, is, it needs to be observed in our life and in our conduct. Hallelujah. In chapter 10 of Hebrews, verse 38 to 39, we see here that uh, God is not pleased with backsliders. And so these verses would give us again warning about uh, living in faith and living righteously. Let's start with verse 38. It says here, the just shall live by faith. The just, the kitinalintig, the righteous, shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, if anyone uh, backslides, what does God say in His word? My soul has no pleasure in him. Mabigat pakinggan. This is coming from the word of God. If anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. In verse 39, but we are not of those who draw back. Now, this is a positive note sa atin na nagpapatuloy, those who are found faithful in, in God. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe in the, in the salvation of God, that it is a process that God continues to mold us as we continue to read His Word, we continue to abide in His Word, we are not perfect as long as we are here on earth. We will still keep sinning if we are not so watchful. But it is a process. That's why we have to continue to be vigilant, to watch our life, to watch our words, to watch our actions, so that in due time when the Lord comes, when we are called to His heavenly kingdom, then the salvation will be fulfilled, the salvation for our souls. Amen? And we believe in that in the resurrection, we believe also in the salvation of our souls. Hallelujah. Moving on forward, uh, in the next uh, part of our topic of being a watchman, I, I asked uh, Dr. Miriam, my friend, for the definition of a watchman. And uh, Webster would say that uh, a watchman, there are other uh, meanings or synonyms of uh, a watchman. 
It also would mean becoming a guard or a person or a group who keeps watch. A guard that keeps watch over someone or something. Other synonyms are custodian. Uh, just like me, uh, I was assigned to be the property custodian of the church. And so I could not keep silent if I see uh, many things not being properly arranged or fixed or napapabayaan. I would, uh, it would irritate me, especially if I gave warning for many times. I had been uh, correcting people to take care of the uh, equipments or the important uh, things, uh, property, church properties, and they do not listen. And so I need to do my part to warn and to teach. If they do not yet know, then I teach them. But if they have been taught many times, I give them warning. And that's the work of a watchman. Another is to be a guardian. Another synonym is a keeper. Uh, somebody who keeps the factory at night uh, to watch over the factory or a place, a workplace. Uh, other words are lookout. Pero ang lookout kasi ginagamit sa krimen eh. Yung one who is uh, going to steal, may lookout sila. <laughs> but in a positive way, uh, lookout means to watch. to be careful, to observe, okay? Other words are reminder or picket, sentinel, warden, or warder. Example, just like a watch to patrol the, the place, a certain uh, compound, okay? Or patrol, a spotter, a bodyguard, a surveillance. Uh, they mention here also a watchdog or a convoy, a defender. An escort, an honor guard, or oh, a gatekeeper. A gatekeeper is the one who watches the gate, the entrance. A caretaker is more general also, taking care of the property of someone else. Just like Adam, he was supposed to be the caretaker of the Garden of, e uh, Garden of Eden when God assigned him and created him and put him there. You find that in Genesis chapter 2. Even a janitor is also a watchman. That makes sure that everything is clean. Every corner, every office, every uh, room is clean. A curator. Uh, this is my favorite word. That uh, would also include stewardship. A watchman is also a steward. Napakaganda pag ikaw ay naging steward. Uh, you will be exercising one of the uh, ayaw ng mga tao. Uh, if you're becoming a steward... You will be concerned of everything. Be steward especially of not only your life, ang daming napapabayaan ang kanilang uh, health because we are not a good steward of our bodies and our health. But we just eat and eat and eat. Huh? But it's important to uh, become a steward. That's why I, I, in, in some times, I, uh, I want to teach also about stewardship, becoming a good steward. Kasi doon, doon ang unang ministry ko that I never realized that it is about stewardship pala. Okay? Uh, to be careful, to take care of, uh, uh, even if it's not your property, mas lalo pag property ng church, property ng iba, especially if it involves spending the money of God, let us be very careful. And it's good, I tell you, it is fulfilling. The work of a steward, God will bless you. Okay, so on. I've mentioned many things about the the meaning of a watchman. Okay, and let's uh, move on. In Ezekiel chapter three, verse seventeen, going back to our reference, and in Ezekiel, uh, it mentions here about uh, the role of a uh, watchman. We read in verse seventeen. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. God was talking through the prophet Ezekiel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth, he says, and give them warning from me. So, a watchman, the role of a watchman was spiritually analogous to the role of a uh, in the, in the, the, spiritual, the spiritual watchman that we're talking about now. is similar to the role of the watchman on a city wall uh, during the olden times. 
uh, parang mga security guards ba? Uh, security guards. Uh, the watchman on the city wall that they become, they are vigilant to spot the approach. They, they could easily see and know if an enemy is approaching. And they warn the residents to master a defense. They warn the residents to prepare for incoming danger. So the prophet gave timely warnings of an approaching judgment on them. Timely warnings means you do not hesitate. If you need to ring the bell, just like uh, when Pag Asa, this time where when the when the Philippines and most of Asia is being hit by these uh, storms during these uh, burr months, October, November, and December, uh, this this typhoon Ulysses is one of the strongest aside from the uh, typhoon Rolly that has passed two weeks ago. Damin and damin ang uh, damages that has been caused by the typhoon. And so the uh, important agencies of the government, like the Pag-asa, so it's called Pag-asa para mabigyan ng Pag-asa ang mga tao so that they could prepare. Uh, but Pag-asa has another meaning. Pag-asa is uh, for Philippine Astronomical Geophysical, so forth. It is a government agency that studies the weather. And so they give timely warnings to people They not only uh, ring the siren for, for from the city hall, but they also in in uh, they keep announcing over radio and over the TV, so that the people will be warned of the ongoing uh, uh, expected danger that could be caused by the strong winds and the typhoon. And so it's the same responsibility of Ezekiel, who was the prophet and became the watchman of God during his time that he had to keep warning the people of the approaching judgment that God had allowed so that the people will be awakened and they could be prepared. They could turn back from their wickedness. Now, the work of a watchman, we could also read, if you have your uh, pen and paper with you, you could just write down these references. Uh, we do not have enough time to review, but there are several uh, references wherein we could see the uh, how the work or the life of a watchman is uh, you could you could uh, imagine it by when you read these uh, verses uh, it is vividly set forth in second samuel uh, i repeat second samuel chapter 18 verse 24 to 27 in second kings chapter 9 again second kings chapter 9 verse 17 to 20 Also in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 5, in chapter 6 verse 1 of Jeremiah, uh, again in Hosea chapter 8 verse 1, in Amos, the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 6, and in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. This is where if you read the, the responsibilities and the work and the function of a watchman, Uh, you would you would realize and see that it's very important. Hindi basta basta. And uh, again, we are called to become a watchman. The individual responsibility to trust and obey God is the responsibility of each person who is warned. It is an individual responsibility to obey, to listen to the warnings and to obey and to trust God. Disobedience or disobedience to God's message was a matter of life and death. This, these were the warnings that the prophets before were, were mentioning and were uh, warning through, through God's word. And so it's very clear. It's a matter between life and death. If you want to live, you need to obey. If you do not want to obey, you do not listen to the warnings, then you will suffer death. You will be closer to death. You will be closer to danger if you do not heed the warnings. There is the saying, ignorance of the law excuses no one. You see? It's not, you have, it's not because you do not, you do not hear the law, you do not hear, you do not know the law and you have not heard the warning and it says that uh, you do not know what to do. For example, during a typhoon, You do not have to hear the announcement of Pag-asa. 
You do not have to have current to watch TV. If you see the wind coming, that they are, the trees are being blown and that they are being uh, felt, and uh, rooftops of buildings are being blown away, you do not have to warn. Even by what you see, you could already be warned and you should know what to do. So ignorance of the law, even when you have heard the warning or not, it does not excuse you from any punishment or penalty. And so it's the same. It follows even sometimes the negligence of preachers. Those teachers, us who study the word and we neglect the negligence of preachers, if we do not mention the warning, we, do not, we are afraid to teach it in the pulpit, we are afraid to give warning even during Bible studies, or when the opportunity arrives that we mention the warning from God's word, that does not excuse the person. Uh, to be saved from uh, divine punishment. So please take note, uh, brothers and sisters. Again, I mentioned there is the saying that ignorance of the law excuses no one from the penalty or for, from punishment. And so the same with uh, preachers. The negligence of preachers, it excuses no one. There is no excuse uh, to be saved from divine punishment. Okay? There is this, uh, now we continue to study, I mentioned about the responsibility of each, but we also uh, try to focus on the responsibility of a watchman. The responsibility of a watchman is to warn God's people of an incoming judgment so that the people would have opportunity to prepare and be safe. There's a reason. You need to warn so that the people could have the opportunity to prepare. Makapaghanda sila. Tapno malisyanda ti didigra. If you open the news here in the Philippines, it's so, it's so sad. Sometimes the, even the government, they are irked. They are uh, irritated, especially if they give warnings to a low-lying barangay or to a place na, that's always being flooded. And they keep warning, they give early warnings to the people to evacuate. But the people refuse to evacuate. They still prefer to stay in their house. But when the water comes already, then the, that's the time that they do action. They run up to their rooftops. And if the government does not uh, do anything to do action, they complain. The people complain. And they say that the government has not done anything. And yet uh, they have already given warning. But the, these people... Sometimes it is uh, uh, sad to say that uh, the spirit of laziness, the spirit of greed, they do not want to leave their house, they do not want to go to an evacuation center. Uh, it's only when there is relief that they wave their hands and they shout that, come here in dito, even us, we have not yet received relief. And that's the time that they ask for help to be rescued. And so that's the attitude of people, even if they are being warned, they do not listen. And in the Word of God, it says, uh, even if you, you have ears, you keep uh, hearing, but you could not actually listen. You have eyes, you see what's happening, but you, do, you refuse to see and take action. So it's sad. Okay, so going back to the responsibility of a watchman, uh, we are to be warned of an approach of danger. Uh, what are the warning uh, warnings that they used before, they used a trumpet because it's loud, it's a small instrument but when it is blown by a watchman you could hear the sound from afar the blowing of the trumpet once the watchman did his duty ah, doon na makikita ang kung sino ang uh, who will do their part the watchman does their duty by warning, giving the uh, blowing the trumpet uh, or uh, warning by word then it now becomes the responsibility now of those who are listening. Once the watchman did his duty, the responsibility is now passed on to each person, to those who are being warned, to those who have listened. Each person is accountable for his response to God's warnings. I repeat, each person is accountable for his own response. Each of us, you and me, we are responsible for how we react, our response to the warnings of God. A response to the word of God that warns us to keep away from sin, to keep away from temptation. Whether we want to die in judgment or to live as one who heeded 
the call or who heeded the warning and repented. So it's a choice. All of us are given a choice. Whether maikli yung panahon, whether we have a short time to think and to, to act, all of us are given the choice. Since we uh, have that uh, gift of knowledge and wisdom, we are also given that opportunity to, to choose. If you want life, then you need to be righteous. You need to listen. You need to be warned. If you want to die and you do not care for your own life, you do not care for your family, it's up to you if you want to go on, keep on sinning. And if you want to keep on sinning, sometimes you keep on making reasons and many excuses. And that's why uh, it, it says in God's word that the ears of people have become dull of hearing. Because even if they know the word of God, they pretend not to know. They keep listening, but they do not hear actually. Okay, because they have become dull of hearing and they pretend and they hesitate to change their life and their actions. Okay, so Ezekiel had been a very faithful and obedient watchman. Though each sinner is responsible for her, his own sin. In Ezekiel chapter 3, you, you read that in verse 18 and 20, that uh, each person is responsible I repeat, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 20. You could read that at home uh, if you have time to review them. Uh, it reminds us that uh, each person, especially if you are a sinner and you keep on sinning, you are responsible for your own action, your own life, your own sin. And you could not blame that to others. You could not even blame it to the watchman. Okay. In chapter 18 of Ezekiel, let's go to... Read the uh, following verses of uh, chapter 18. Uh, there's at least 20 verses, but I'll just uh, summarize it with my notes here. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1 to 20. The prophet who is negligent in his duty to proclaim the warning messages becomes in God's sight a manslayer. That is the description na... If the, the uh, watchman did not do his responsibilities, he did not, he parang pinabayaan na, he ignored what he saw even if there was incoming danger. And he did not warn the people of God, he did not warn the place, he did not give warning. Uh, and something, the judgment of God comes and uh, the, there is uh, some punishment on the place or amongst the people. In God's sight, that watchman would be considered a manslayer. You know, a manslayer, parang killer ka rin. Kasi pinabayaan mong mamatay yung mga kapwa mong tao, mga kapwa mong nananampalataya. It is, uh, God has considered him a manslayer when God takes the person's life. Pag yun ang yung tao, the sinner who has, you see that keeps on sinning and you do not warn him, even you, it says that we read in Ezekiel chapter 3 that, uh, chapter 33 that God would require the blood of that man who was punished or who died he would require in your hand so the responsibility of the prophet Ezekiel as a watchman and all of us who are listening to this word and these warnings it is very serious that when we heed the warning we need also to extend it and to share it with others it's just like when you you receive the love of God you receive your salvation you experience God's grace in your life, it, is, it becomes now your responsibility to share it also with others, to share God's love and God's faithfulness. Now it becomes your testimony to share it with others. Okay? And you could also read that in uh, James chapter 3, verse 1. And being a watchman, he is responsible uh, for that person's death. Okay? If you did not warn. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 5 also, you could uh, read that. The Apostle Paul had this passage uh, in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6 and 8. Uh, that's why you have to keep uh, writing down these uh, verses so that you could follow. Uh, the Apostle Paul had this passage in view in, in Acts chapter 18, verse 6 and in Acts chapter 20, verse 26. Maybe we could read these uh, verses. But when they opposed him, blasphemed, he, sh he shook his garments and said to them, 
Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Paul was uh, uh, mentioning this uh, in his passage about the seriousness of uh, warning, giving warning to the people. Okay? And the responsibility of uh, warning, if you do not give, God will uh, uh, ask of your hand the blood of the person that was supposed to be warned. Even for preachers today, there is such a warning that we have read a while ago in Hebrews 13, 17. Uh, certainly, the, concert, the consequences of such unfaithfulness on the preacher's part, especially if we become negligent and we feel uh, we, we hesitate to give warning the responsibility of the preachers is also very serious because the, the result and the consequence of not warning uh, it includes divine chastening by God especially that we have that responsibility as preachers not just to keep reading but we need also to speak it out and uh, another result and consequence aside from the chastening by God would be the loss of eternal reward we read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. Maybe we could open, let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, starting from verse 1 to verse 5. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries, mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself. Yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. So it is the Lord that would require and that would judge us if we did not do our responsibilities. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Counsels are also the motives. It uh, is similar to in what are the motives of the heart. It's only God who knows. Then each one's praise will come from God. Okay, so, the Apostle Paul even has uh, explained the responsibility or the consequences of watchmen who do not do their part, of preachers and teachers of the word that do not do their part. Okay? So, uh, in Hebrews uh, 12, verse 9, Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us. It's talking about uh, our earthly fathers who give correction and give warning. And we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of Spirits and live? It talks about submission. It talks about obedience to God. Now, uh, it, is, it is better to obey and live, amen? Rather than to lose your life because of unrighteousness and disobedience. You could also read that in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 30. It says, For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. What is this reason? Because of disobedience. Because of uh, lack of uh, heeding the word and heeding the warning. Okay? Uh, this, this is under the... Uh, the topic on examining yourself. When we do not examine ourselves, and before we undergo uh, and uh, take in the human, uh, the Holy Communion, and we do not judge ourselves and seek for forgiveness, and uh, we do not confess our sins, we are taking judgment upon ourselves. Okay, in James chapter one verse twenty one, we are exhorted not to be. Uh, hearers only, but become to become doers also. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. This is another warning and reminder to all of us. 
and received with, weak, with meekness the implanted word. What is the implanted word? The things that we have heard from the beginning, the word of God that has caused us to repent of our sins and that we may embrace salvation, which is able to save your souls. And the next verse, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Okay? So we praise God for these exhortations. And one, uh, one more verse in 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life. He pertaining to God. God will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. So, we are exhorted to give warning also to our brothers, especially if we see them sinning. Okay? So, it's important that uh, these verses will help uh, remind us and will help exhort us. Our next uh, part of the topic of being called to be a watchman, now we talk about the responsibilities of each believer. We are called by the word of God to be a watchman to our fellow believers against sin and temptation. Now there are certain responsibilities uh, that's important for us that as believers we need to uh, incorporate in our life and in our service as we continue to serve God. Jesus says in Matthew 26 verse 41 that we must watch and pray. And there was a warning here so that you do not enter into temptation. So even, even when he was at the last days or hours of his life before he was arrested at the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he was warning his disciples who went with him. Instead of watching and being with him, uh, they instead were, fell asleep because of, they were so tired and they fell asleep. And so Jesus warned them. He, he said that we need to watch and pray. Watch and pray means we need to keep, be always alert. And it also exhorts us on our prayer life, on how we, uh, how we deal with our daily work, with our daily circumstances. If we are not watchful, we easily fall into temptation. Amen? And, the, and he also says here that the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. But that's not our only reason. He was just commenting on the, on the attitude of people, of his disciples, that uh, he, although the spirit wants, we all, always, most often the time, often times we succumb to to our weak flesh. Na nakapoy, iso nga masakul kanayon tayo nga mapal paladipan. Amen. In Acts, Paul also would exhort us, and he says in uh, chapter twenty of Acts, from verse twenty-seven to twenty-eight, for I have not shunned to declare to you. I am not ashamed. I do not, uh, uh, I do not uh, prohibit. I, I do not uh, keep this from me, myself only. But I do not. I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Whole counsel. Amin nga sa sa unti apo. Amin nga pamagbaga. Amin nga nadadal tayo sa unti apo. Therefore, take, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock. Take heed to yourselves, not only us who are watching right now, but even we give warning to our uh, fellow believers, our brothers and sisters, among all and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. It does not mean na overseers, mga pastors lang, na, lang natin. Even as leaders, the leaders of the church, you have that responsibility to give warning, to teach, and to remind people people in church. Amen? The Holy Spirit which has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which He purchased with His own blood. In verse 29 to verse 30, it continues to say, Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn you and to warn everyone night and day with tears. In verse 32, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up. It's only from the Word of God that is able to encourage us and to strengthen and to comfort us. It's able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. 
Amen. And in the following uh, verses, uh, we in in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, starting from verse 14 to 21, we could read here uh, the paternal care of Paul. Paternal is yung fatherly care na of Paul among uh, his churches, among the flock, and among his disciples. In verse 14, it says, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. Verse 15, I have become your father through the gospel. And in verse 17, as I teach everyone in every church, I teach everyone in every church, as long as he has the opportunity He would always teach. And uh, we are exhorted in the in verse 20, where the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And in 21, what do you want? He says, shall I come to you with a rod? Shall I come to you with a rod? Or in love and a spirit of gentleness? Praise the Lord. In chapter 10, verse 12, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, if you have your markers, you, you could mark your Bibles. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. Kitaan nyo, aganad kayo, na kayong uh, mangisigsigurado, na kung ayong hang kayong uh, matumtumba, hang kayong agbasbaso lang kayo kumapkapoy. It is a warning to all of us to, who think that we are righteous in our own eyes, that we are always correct. Take warning, lest he fall, it says. Okay? In uh, Corinthians, the same, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, watch, if we are exhorted to watch, to stand fast in the faith. If we are exhorted to become brave, to be brave. So not only that we watch, to be careful, to be alert, but we need to be firm in our faith. We need to be brave, to be courageous, to be strong. So stand firm in our faith. Uh, we could also be. We could also read that in Isaiah chapter seven, verse nine. Now the purpose, the purpose one uh, of the uh, of uh, our warning, the purpose of watchmen to warn. Uh, we could read from Colossians chapter 1 verse 28 warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus that is the purpose if if others would be tired in listening to warnings they would question uh, the reminders they would question leadership why do we always uh, keep warning why do we always teach about uh, being obedient why do we always teach about tithing as a uh, a commandment of god for all believers why do we need to include uh, giving in worship because it's a commandment it's an act of worship to god our worship is not complete without our giving why do we have to keep reminding it's important to be baptized and to be baptized not only in water but also in the holy spirit all these warnings all these uh, Uh, reminders of God's word the purpose is for us to become righteous and to live a holy life and uh, in Colossians 1 28 we are we are exhorted that we are not preaching any other person we are not preaching any gospel we are preaching him him we preach it says here warning every man and it's not only a, 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 a certain group of person of uh, people but everybody needs to be taught and needs to be warned And teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So nga naman minsan, ure no adot is istorya na. Even how much they they complain or accuse the church, free believers in Christ. Uh, this is our church. We believe that this is the church of God. And God has used bishop and all our pastors through his word to teach the word of God. And uh, we could not, we could only do... Uh, teaching we do not it's not our work to be convincing people it's the work of god that's the business of the holy spirit to convict people and uh, it's not the job of the pastor to be always patting the back you know we teach and we encourage and those who are who listen and those who are quick to acknowledge their pagkakamali and if they learn that righteousness is part of living a a blessed life here on earth then praise the lord 
and we are doing our job well. Okay? So that is the purpose, one of the purposes why we need to keep warning is that we may present every man to become perfect, to be righteous in the sight of God. And it is for Christ Jesus, okay? Because he has sacrificed his life on the cross. And it is but right that we give back our life to be of service to him. So holiness and righteousness, you could also read that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, it says here to pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So uh, I heard the bishop once say that, uh, uh, why is this church so strict? Why are we so very strict in the policies of the church? Yes, because uh, we want, and even he says that, I want to be acceptable. I want to be pleasing to the Lord. And not only him, not only the pastors, uh, even the members, the whole church, that is the reason why Jesus Christ came here on earth and gave his life to die for our sins, that we may be made righteous. It's not our own righteousness that will save us. It's not our own discipline. It is the discipline of God that we learn from his word. God's righteousness, Jesus' righteousness. His holiness will be the one to mold us and to make us worthy to enter his kingdom. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, we are also exhorted, brethren, we are exhorted to continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. These are all parts of the responsibilities of uh, one who is being warned, one who has received and heard the word of God, that we continue earnestly in prayer because we do not have the power if we do not have the power from the Holy Spirit that God would be on our side if we do not submit, then we lack the power to resist the enemy. And that's why we have to keep be, be, always be vigilant. Even Jesus Christ, we read earlier, He said to His disciples, watch and pray. And that's why we are also exhorted in Colossians that we need to continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. And also in another verse, in chapter 3, verse 17, Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 we are exhorted by his word it says here and whatever you do in word or deed whatever we do in word or in deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ many times we tend to always forget that even if we are Christians by name we always fall short of the Christians by word or Christians by action because we always forget this. And that's why Paul is exhorting the churches. Paul is exhorting all readers that whatever we do in word or in deed, whatever our actions, we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just like having Jesus beside us and we are natatakot na magkamali. We are afraid to do wrong because Jesus is always there. And we are, we are afraid to, to do a mistake. And that's why it's always nice to keep in mind that whether he is there present physically, but he's not there physically. He's always around us in his in mind. He's in our hearts. He's in the people we meet. And that's why if we do it in the name of the Lord, we are always aware that he is there seeing us. God is uh, omnipresent. Amen. He's omniscience and he is omnipotent. He's always they're looking at us all the time. And that's why when we ever we do things in word or in deed, we need to do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And that would uh, help encourage each one as we continue in our service and love for Him. Uh, another uh, chapter in, in the book of Thessalonians, in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 to 9, I've written a few uh, notes. Uh, you may read it, but uh, if we go through the verses one by one, this is actually a plea for purity, uh, wherein Paul was exhorting the Thessalonians. Uh, he was pleading. He was uh, uh, exhorting them and uh, explaining the will of God for sanctification. In verse 1, it talks about 
that we are exhorted to walk and to please God. To walk and to please God. In the next verse, in verse 2, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 to 9. Now in verse 2, knowing the commandments. It's important that we know the commandments. We know it not only by, by our mind, but we know it by heart. We should know. If we could hardly memorize, just like me, I could hardly memorize, I keep reminding myself that I have to keep reading the Word, reading the Bible, so that we will know His commandments. And number three, we are exhorted to abstain from sexual immorality. Abstain means to avoid, to, to not to do, okay? To prevent, prevent you from doing it, even not to think about it. And many times people fail, they are being tempted. Even if you're married, they, 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 uh, they commit sexual immorality or adultery. Even nowadays, the young people, the single people, even if they're not married, they commit sexual immorality. And that's why we are being warned by God's word. In verse 4, we are exhorted to possess our own vessel. We possess our own vessel in sanctification. Sanctification means in purity and in honor. That's why it's always nice that uh, whenever a couple, whenever even single people, young people, when they have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, especially for uh, ladies, it's always nice and uh, it's always best that uh, if you have plans to get married, you bring and offer yourself until after the altar, until the, after you are wed, and then you could uh, uh, have sexual relations with your husband, not just with your boyfriend, not just with anybody. And that's why uh, these, are, these exhortations of Paul in God's Word, these are reminders for people. Because nowadays, people tend to forget that it's important to live a righteous life. In verse 5 again, we are exhorted not in passion of lust, and the, the passion of the flesh. Sometimes that, that the, the permissive will of God, He allows the self-will of people. They fall into temptation and lust, the lust of the flesh. In verse 6, yeah, we are exhorted, no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Yeah, because, you know, if we defraud and sa uron tayo, defraud is you're not being transparent. You're not being open. You do not want to discuss. Uh, you're not being accountable. And so, let us be reminded that God is the avenger. He, he's the avenger of the poor. He's the avenger of those who are uh, kawawa, the, uh, those who are being mocked and those who are being deceived, uh, those who are not masasauran. In verse 7, God calls us to holiness. God calls us to holiness. And in verse 8, Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man. Those who, do, who listen to this word and these warnings, but they reject, they reject what is being said, they're not, they're not rejecting man, they're rejecting God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Okay? In verse 9, But concerning... Brotherly love, you should have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. Loving one another is that you should have concern. We need to have concern. We could not say that we are obeying God by loving one another and we do not show our concern. And we need to have the courage, that boldness to correct others, especially if we see that they are living in sin. And we need to act and be a voice to give them warning. In another verse, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14, we read here and it says, Warn those who are unruly. Unruly means even those who are insubordinate. Those who are not, uh, uh, who are not obedient. Those who are uh, misbehaved or they are idle. You warn those who are unruly, those who are idle, not doing anything. They do not know how to serve. They do not know how to extend their hands to help. We warn them. We also comfort the faint-hearted. Faint-hearted, those who are being discouraged. 
i, i comfort the isuda we uphold the weak it says here in the word of god in in the same verse and we need to be patient with all being patient with all that is where sometimes i fail also as a coordinator because i i want to make things done quickly i lose patience and that's why i get mad but it's not a reason for me no i, I always justify but we need to be patient with all and that is uh, god's uh, warning and uh, exhortation to all of us jesus says he continues to say in matthew 18 verse 15 moreover if your brother sins against you read read, read that there are two things that we learn that if we see our brother sinning against us, the first thing that we need to go uh, to do is to go and tell him his fault before you and him alone, between you. So the first thing when we see a brother who is sinning, uh, it's between you, the two of you, that you need to warn, you need to tell him his fault. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Jesus is the one uh, uh, talking to us here. If you have, uh, if he hears you, you have gained your brother. If he will not hear, then what's the next step that we should do? Take with you one or two more. We we bring along with us. If your brother or sister does not listen to you and they do not heed your warning, then the next thing that you do is to bring an, uh, somebody, a respected leader, a co-pastor or co-leader to come with you to advise that person. Take with you one or two more that by mouth of two meaning by advice of how you say how you advise him by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established that there may be witnesses okay in verse 17 the third thing that you should do and if he refuses even to hear them you see the person that we are warning if he refuses to hear you if he refuses to hear uh, the, your companions whom you have brought along to advise and to warn that person, if he refuses to even to hear them, tell it to the church. Tell it to a bigger body. Uh, hindi ito gossip. Uh, iba naman yung gossip. Kasi hindi mo pa ginagawa yung responsibility mo of warning the person. You're already telling the mistake of somebody to your friends or to somebody else. That is gossip. But in this case, you need to do the warning first. And if he does not listen, then you tell it to, to your a group of people, to the church, to the concerned people. The church is a family of that person. Na tutulong sayo to advise that person. If he refuses even to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses to hear the church, let him be. Let him be to you like a heathen or an unbeliever or a tax collector. So what do we do with unbelievers? Ah, hindi natin, we do not just reject them. We still continue to show God's love. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. We still continue to show God's love to the unbelievers. And so, it would be the same. Even this person had become a believer before, if he had backslidden and he does not listen to the advice and to corrections and he does not listen to warnings, then we treat him as an unbeliever. Okay? In Luke chapter 17, verse 3, we again are exhorted here, just like our opening uh, verse in Psalms a while ago, that we are uh, exhorted here in Luke chapter 17, verse 3, take heed to yourselves, take warning to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, what shall you do? Rebuke him. Underline the word rebuke. And if he repents, the next important word, that we should do the word and an action that we should do is to forgive him okay so after we rebuke him and if he repents then we forgive him it's very important that we extend forgiveness who are we not to, be, to not to give forgiveness if god has forgiven us all have sinned it says in his word and come short of the glory of god and so we all deserve god's forgiveness and so people like us who are unper imperfect and who continue to sin, if they repent after we rebuke them, then we forgive them. Amen? Hallelujah. Paul exhorts also in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, But you be watchful in all things. I repeat, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, 
Paul would exhort us and he says that you be watchful in all things. All things. Lahat. In lahat ng bagay. We need, we need to be watchful. Not only in our own health, our own life, not only in our own plans, not only in our own uh, family, but even in our ministry. Sa lahat na where we are involved in, where we are expected to serve, where we are expected even in our workplace. Let us be watchful in all things and we need to endure afflictions or we need to endure persecutions or discrimination. This uh, past uh, months of July and August and September, the, our churches and our brethren in Kalinga and in Cagayan, even parts of Ifpugao, have suffered uh, lots of uh, bashing or, the, or uh, discrimination. Or, or persecutions from people, not only from unbelievers, but especially even from uh, Christians of other churches and from people who have left the church. Na dahil may COVID, sabi nila, oh, kayo free believers, na COVID kayo. And then others would, to the extent that even if they, they once they knew that you are uh, a free believer member and you go to market, they will bring away yung binebenta, yung tinitinda, ilalayo. Others, they do not want to get your money. They do not even want to touch your money. Others, they would, once they meet you at the, in the way, in the past, they would cover their mouth and lisyanda sika, lisyanda. In places where they know that there is the church, if they're walking, they realize that it's the frontage of the church. They pass the other side and they cover their mouths. Uh, those are all the discrimination that are people the churches and even the members, even some pastors were not allowed to go back to their uh, assignments for quite some time because they were discriminated and they did not accept because free believers had COVID down. They had the COVID and they, could, they were the cause of COVID. They even accused the bishop or Bishop Moses of having brought COVID to Kalinga, which was not true. And so these are all parts of the persecutions and discriminations. That we need to endure. Paul exhorts, again I repeat in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. We need to be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions or endure persecutions. We need to do the work of an evangelist. What is doing the work of an evangelist? Pagpatuloy natin is share ang gospel. Pagpatuloy natin ang uh, pag-share ng test, ating testimonies. To go out to Bible studies. Kahit na pandemic pa rin, it should not hinder us from going out and conducting Bible studies and prayer meetings in houses or worship services in houses or even in church. If you really love God, then God will work out. He will make a way for you. Now, it is sharing. It's a simply a sharing Jesus to others. What have you experienced in your life with Jesus when you accepted Him? That is, you are also an evangelist by sharing Jesus to others okay and what lastly it says also that we need to fulfill your ministry so if your if your ministry is ushering souls continue by ushering souls if your ministry is driving continue to drive they drive and reach out to people continue to drive the pastor to the outreach if you do not know how to preach but somebody knows how to preach you volunteer to drive that has been my ministry from the very start and even as I was called as a pastor I never forgot I never forget and I do not hesitate by driving and delivering people and fetching people. Hallelujah. God be glorified. And in another uh, chapter, oh, this is our last verse for this afternoon, for this evening. And uh, last reference in 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, we have two, two chapters. And 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7 to 10. Kindly write now, if you have a pen and paper. Uh, we are exhorted. This, this talks about serving for God's glory. Serving for God's glory. In verse 7, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. It's important that we become serious and watchful in your prayers, in our prayers, to become alert and sober-minded. Alert, alert is you're awake. Na aritak, uh, always ready. Sober-minded is nakafocus. 
you are focused on the work you are focused on the on your assignment on doing it and uh, being serious and watchful means even in our prayers it's not because you need any something then and then you become uh, active in your prayer life even if it is not your need if it's the needs of others that you need to pray for that's where you extend your love and that's where you extend your focus and your time to pray for the needs of others amen in verse 8 it talks about loving for love for one another agape love love covers a multitude of sins hallelujah we we express our forgiveness and we share god's love to others in verse 9 it talks about being hospitable to one another being hospitable without grumbling kung minsan may pupunta sa iyo Maria, pahingi nga ng isang kilong bigas. And then, you offer, okay, meron. And afterwards, the person left, and then you complain, and you grumble. You know, you're not, you're not showing true love, and you're not being truly hospitable if there is some grumbling and complaining. If you do it with all your heart, then uh, just give it freely, and smile, and give it joyfully. Being hospitable to one another there without grumbling. Awan ti agriri ko ma. No, kunada nga, Oh, Harold, may woman, pagdatom natin ang kagsakdo. Anyagot dun. Apay awan ti sabali. Ang kang agras-rason na kasi, no, si kagarod kinita da. If you are the one that they saw that you go, that you, that they need you to help and extend a hand, do not need to grumble. And you, you do your part in extending your hand to help. Verse 10. It exhorts us to minister your gift to one another as good stewards. Ministering our gift means sharing, doing it out of love, out of concern. And uh, doing it, giving your gift, minister your gift to one another. If we truly are say that we are gifted uh, with talents, we are gifted with uh, uh, a generous heart, then we, good it, we do it for others as a good steward a good steward is you are faithful amen you could be trusted in verse 11 it exhorts us uh, to speak and to minister with god-given ability we need to speak to speak means we need to uh, tell we need we do not uh, just keep it to ourselves we need to uh, say it to speak and minister with god-given ability God-given ability is yung hindi napipilitan. God-given ability is that you you do not uh, you're not uh, murmuring. Uh, you have that strength. You have that ability. You have that time. You have the talent. Talent. Then if you acknowledge that everything came from God, it's not of your own. Then you should apply it. You should be willing to share it. You should be willing to go. You should be willing to offer it because it is for God's glory. Amen. So we we speak and we minister with God-given ability for God's glory, not for anyone, not for anybody, not even for yourself. It is for God's glory. Hallelujah. Now in our last uh, chapter, uh, in chapter five, First uh, Peter chapter five, verse five to eleven, it uh, talks about submission. It reminds us again about submit, submitting to God. In James 4, 7 and 10, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But we go back to Peter. Verse Peter, uh, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 5, starting from verse 5 to 11. It, uh, we are exhorted here. That's why I just uh, underlined the key words. Submit to elders. Submit to elders. Elders those who are ahead of us in in reading the word those who are leading us that's why elders also would pertain to our leaders in church elders it does not necessarily mean that he needs to be older than you if you are old in age but there was somebody there ahead of you that had is being used in church and you just entered and you're a new believer and uh, he, is, he, he wants to encourage you, he wants to teach you, then submit. He is also your elder or she is your elder. Okay? Somebody who is ahead of you. Ahead of you in learning God's word. 
So submit to one another and if to one another mean, meaning to everybody, to one and another. And we need to be clothed with humility. Hallelujah. Submit to our elders, submit to one another, and we need to be clothed with humility. I, I remember in one of my uh, uh, the teaching on submission, uh, we could not truly we could not truly be submissive even if we are so obedient if we do not have the submission submissive heart we could not be truly submissive without humility so it's very important to have the spirit of humility when we say yes then we need to have that heart to follow and to to be obedient in the hanga ditong palbilin because it's true somebody could be so very obedient but not submissive they they could be obedient and say yes when in front of you But later on, they will be murmuring and complaining. They do not have that submissive heart. They do not have that spirit of humility that will that will make uh, the, your obedience meaningful. Okay. So uh, the next verses it says we are we are exhorted humble under the mighty hand of God. We need to be humble. We need to be humbled. We need to be taught under the mighty hand of God. Okay. In verse 7, casting care your cares, casting cares upon him, for he cares for you. Again, in verse 8, be sober and be vigilant. Sober-minded is in the right mind. Sober, the hang kanga maululaw, hang ka makonfuse, nakafocus ka. Right-minded, the Ustudya pan panunutum, hangkang ang pan panunuti negative. You are thinking positively. Even if the person in front, in the pulpit, is giving a sermon, he is uh, instructing, you think positively. You could never be fruitful in your life and in your service if you're always thinking negatively. You do not yet listen to the whole instructions. You always say, I, I already know that. If you're giving instruction to do something, I already did it. Even if you do not uh, really do You think that you have done your work uh, uh, correctly? No. You need to listen first to the corrections, uh, to the instructions, okay? Be sober and be vigilant. Vigilant is you're always watchful, always ready, okay? Verse 9, resist the devil and stand firm in your faith or being steadfast in faith. And uh, the next verse in verse 10, God will perfect. He will establish. Perfect means He will make you right. He will make you righteous. He will make us uh, uh, be correct. Because nobody's perfect, only Christ. Only God is perfect. So God will perfect us. He will establish us. He will strengthen. And He will settle you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is the word of the Lord. We thank God for this time of uh, uh, hearing His Word and studying His Word about being a watchman, being a, uh, a watchman to our fellow uh, companions, to our fellow brethren, to warn if needed. Uh, uh, we need to be vigilant also and not get tired. And uh, at the same time, we need to encourage. Uh, it's true that this is not the time to... to be always patting at the back. But there are people who really need our pat at the back. Uh, they need encouragement, especially if they are new believers. But uh, mind you, for for long-time believers, for for especially for pastors and leaders, it's not a pat in the back that's needed. It's a warning that's needed. Because uh, we are nearing the end time. And God is coming soon. Christ, Jesus Christ is coming soon to get His church. And we need to be alert. Uh, if we study again, and if you have heard and uh, uh, read the story of the five virgins, uh, the ten virgins actually, but only five of the virgins were the ones who were ready. They were alert. They were vigilant. They were sober-minded. And uh, they were aware of the warnings. Okay? And if we want to be part of the Uh, of the church of God, of the bride, where in Jesus Christ will be, uh, will be our, 
the church is the bride and we need to be come all part of the bride okay because Jesus Christ will become the he is the master of the house he is the groom he will meet his church in the air and if we are found righteous and we are found holy and praise God because we have hidden the word of God we have kept his word in our heart and we have been obedient and we had been submissive and uh, let God be praised in our life as we continue to seek him we continue to serve him and let it all be for his glory alone let God bless you all and thank you for listening to this message uh, let us continue to learn from it and let's continue to share it also with others to become a watchman for God God bless you let us pray Father, we just thank you, Lord, even for this evening. And we thank you, Father, for the opportunity of listening to your word. Thank you, God, for uh, blessing your word. And continue, Lord, to let your Holy Spirit uh, continue to guide each one that we may be able to do and uh, apply these uh, warnings, apply this whatever we have learned uh, in our lives and be able also to we ask for your courage and your uh, your boldness, Lord, that we may be able to share uh, this word, what we have learned uh, today with others also, Lord God. And Father, bless uh, our pastors wherever they are, uh, our overseers, even the bishop, that uh, we speak health and strength among them, among each pastor, among each pastoring leader, each pastor, each preacher, Lord God. And uh, including their, li uh, their families, Lord, we uh, speak uh, full salvation upon their loved ones and their family members, Father God. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for always there, being there, for guiding us and continue to uh, work within our midst and work through our lives, Lord God, that we may fulfill the, the plans of God in our lives. Father, let your name be praised and give glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters, wherever you are.